In Alabama, a state immigration enforcement law known as HB 56 is now on the books despite growing public protests and a partial injunction. The law goes beyond similar measures in Arizona and Georgia by requiring public schools to ask students for proof of citizenship status and cutting off public utilities to undocumented residents. Ten members of Congress traveled to Alabama on a fact-finding mission to hear from those directly affected by the law and will submit their findings to the Justice Department as it pursues a case against the state. At the same time, civil and immigrant rights groups are launching a statewide campaign to repeal HB 56, which they say hurts both the economy and the social fabric of the state. Alice Olstein reports from Birmingham. Thousands of people filled the pews of Birmingham's 16th Street Baptist Church and spilled out into the street as undocumented youth, civil rights luminaries, and elected officials spoke from the pulpit against HB 56. I'm here to ask you for help to stop this racist law. Myra Ranhel crossed the border when she was just 16 to find work that would help her send money back to her younger siblings and ailing mother in Mexico. Over the course of 10 years in Alabama, she graduated from high school and college while working two jobs. Holding back tears, Ranhel took the microphone at Monday's kickoff event to tell those gathered about the true effects of the law. Our community is suffering. My friends have been arrested for no reason, just because they look Hispanic. Police spend their days hunting undocumented people. They put checkpoints only in Hispanic neighborhoods. They make derogatory comments about undocumented before. And now with this law, we terrify what they can do. Under HB 56, law enforcement officers can demand identification if there's a, quote, reasonable suspicion someone they have already legally stopped or detained is undocumented. Yet, Ron Hell and others say this opens the door to selective enforcement and racial profiling in her community. In October, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals placed an injunction on seven of the 30 provisions of the law pending an appeal. The Justice Department's challenge, which claims HB 56 illegally preempts federal law, is still winding its way through the legal system. Church leaders sued Alabama Governor Robert Bentley in August, and other civil liberties groups have their own cases pending, claiming the law violates the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendments. To gather evidence for that case, Mary Bauer of the Southern Poverty Law Center set up a hotline for people to report abuses under HB 56, and the calls came pouring in. A judge advised a lawyer that the lawyer had an obligation to report her own client to the to ICE as undocumented. The same judge stated that he might have to report to ICE any person who asked for an interpreter, as such a request would be a red flag. Latino workers on a construction job site were threatened by a group of men with guns who told them to go back to Mexico and threatened to kill them if they were there the following day. They declined to report the crime to law enforcement because of fears of what would happen if they went to the police. A victim of domestic violence went to court to obtain a protective order. The clerk told her that she would be reported to ICE if she proceeded. Even the lawmakers who pushed hardest for the bill's passage are now having second thoughts. The Birmingham News reports that key state senators are compiling a list of recommended amendments to the law, addressing the parts they say go too far or are having, quote, unintended consequences. But after listening to testimony from Bauer, several undocumented residents, and Birmingham's school superintendent, mayor, and sheriff, Texas Congressman Al Green said these changes would be insufficient. HB 56 cannot be amended. It deserves to be placed on the trash heap of history. Another member of the delegation, California Representative Joe Baca, told FSRN that lawmakers have a moral responsibility to talk to the people directly affected by the legislation they pass, something he says happens far too infrequently. It's like out of sight, out of mind, but people who are actually experiencing and going through this, you have to put yourself in their shoes. Baca, the former chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, says the stories he heard this week motivate him to fight for comprehensive immigration reform, although he concedes it will be hard to move the effort forward. At one point, Republicans were all aboard on comprehensive immigration. Now you can't even get one Republican to sign on to comprehensive immigration. It's become a political wedge issue. But Alabama Latinos and their allies aren't going to wait until a solution comes from Washington. In a nod to the civil rights battle that rocked the state only a generation ago, some are using nonviolent civil disobedience to protest laws they feel are unjust. 
Last week, 13 undocumented activists were arrested in a sit-in at the state capitol in Montgomery. Two other undocumented young men were arrested protesting at a Border Patrol office in Mobile and are now in immigration detention. At Monday's rally in Birmingham, DREAM Act eligible teenager Jose Perez echoed this willingness to come out as undocumented and speak out against injustice. From the pulpit of the 16th Street Baptist Church, he shared his message for the architects and backers of HB 56. To Robert Bentley and Scott Beeson, I have only this to say. I am not leaving. I am undocumented and I am unafraid. The state legislator is scheduled to vote on a bill to repeal HB 56 early next year. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Birmingham.